Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining us for another story here at Annie Narrates. The title for this one goes like this. Sister-in-law tries to make Christmas all about herself and shows off her achievements, so I call her out and remind her she's only living off of my brother and it drives her so crazy that she left the party to file for a divorce but came back one hour later because... I, 18 female, used to be good friends with my sister-in-law Katie, 24 female. We go way back to when she dated my brother Joshua, 24 male in high school. Katie was like a big sister to me, someone I looked up to and admired. She was a regular visitor at our house, and when my brother wasn't around, we would hang out together. We're a small family of four, with my parents, me and Josh, so having someone like Katie in my life Felt like having that cool older sister figure I never had. She was like an angel in my life for a few years. There was a time when she had an argument with my mom and I sided with her. But looking back, I realized my mom was right and Katie was just being difficult. After high school, Josh and Katie got married and I was overjoyed. It felt like they were finally solid and I was genuinely happy for them. It made everything official and I thought that they were in it for the long haul. Let me give you a rundown of the key players in this complicated scenario. First off, there's my brother Joshua. We've got a bit of an age gap between us, about 6 years or so. It might not sound like much, but trust me, a year can make a big difference you know. Despite the age difference, Joshua has always been incredibly loving towards me, treating me like his little princess. While we've never been super close in terms of age, I have always admired his dedication and ambition especially when it comes to his business ventures. Joshua has been hustling since his high school days to build up his own business. He's always had this infectious energy, like a big, friendly golden retriever that just draws people in. His dream has been to make it big and provide our parents with everything they could ever want. His brand, Threats of Comfort, specializes in men's sportswear that's not your typical ankle-length tights and baggy jerseys. Instead, He's focused on creating comfortable, breathable, and stylish activewear that's affordable for the everyday guy. From the get-go, Joshua's designs have been a hit. His brand quickly gained traction thanks to his innovative approach to men's sportswear. He's managed to carve out a niche in the market with his emphasis on comfort, affordability, and style. It's been amazing to see him grow and succeed in his passion, starting from his high school days all the way to now. Joshua's commitment to offering top-notch quality at affordable prices struck a chord with his target customers. His brand quickly became a go-to choice for athletes, fitness buffs, and everyday folks looking for comfortable yet stylish activewear. His designs even caught the attention of local magazines, earning him some well-deserved recognition. Thanks to his growing social media presence, his brand's popularity skyrocketed. In short, his business took off and he was thriving. Now on to Katie. Picture your typical cheerleader type, not exactly the most popular, but she's got her tight-knit group of six friends, and that's all she needs. Katie and Josh cross paths through a mutual friend, and well, you can pretty much guess how the rest of the story unfolded. So here's how things unfolded after Josh and Katie tied the knot right out of high school. They both opted for distance education because Josh wanted to focus on his business and Katie said that she wanted to help him out. That was her explanation at least. Initially, they moved in with our family and I was thrilled about it. However, mom wasn't exactly thrilled with the idea. As time went on, some things started to become clear. Katie spent most of her time making videos and uploading them on TikTok, though she wasn't famous or anything. Meanwhile, she treated herself to luxury items as if it were the 4th of July all on Josh's dime. At first, I didn't think much of it since I adored her back then. However, mom wasn't too pleased with this behavior. She even tried talking to them about it a few times, but nothing really changed. About six months later, Katie insisted that they move out and get their own place. I didn't think much of it at the time. I figured they were married, so it made sense for them to have their own space. In hindsight, maybe they should have done it sooner. After they moved out, things started to shift. They hardly ever visited us, and Katie completely cut off contact with the family, including me. 
The only time they came around was once a year, for about a week, and even then, Kitty acted like she was too good for us. So, last Christmas, I decided to visit Josh and Katie, and I even asked mom and dad to come along, but they weren't interested. I really miss my brother, so I went by myself. Let me tell you, it turned out to be the most embarrassing experience of my life, and probably the worst Christmas too. When I got there, Kitty had all her friends over, and she assigned me to serve them. Josh tried to brush it off as me helping her out, but it felt more like I was being used. Later, when I tried to join them, Katie told me it was an adult zone and that I should go back to my room. Josh got upset about it and took Katie aside to talk. But when they came back out, Katie was smiling while Josh looked defeated. He came to me and asked if I wanted to go to a Christmas party with him and his colleagues. But I was already so fed up that I just went back to my room. I was supposed to stay for another week, but this whole situation made me leave the very next day. Katie seemed happy about it but I could tell Josh was hesitant. It was like he wanted me to stay, but he also knew that it was probably for the best if I went back home. So that's what went down. I just graduated from high school a couple of months ago, and now I'm knee deep in college applications and all that fun stuff. Christmas was just a week ago, and let me tell you, it was a total mess, but somehow I still managed to enjoy it. This time, Katie and Josh were the ones who came over for Christmas because Josh insisted on it. Mom and dad were thrilled to see him after so long and so was I. But as for Katie, well, let's just say I wasn't exactly thrilled about her being there. But hey, she was on my turf now and there was no way I was going to let her ruin Christmas for everyone. Normally, we keep Christmas celebrations pretty low key within our family. But since Josh was back home after such a long time and we had another cousin visiting from Brazil, mom and dad decided to throw a small gathering. It was just us, my cousin from Brazil, my two uncles and their wives, my aunt and her husband, and their kids. So it wasn't a huge gathering, but it was still a special occasion for all of us to be together under one roof after such a long time. Unfortunately, Katie decided to put a damper on things, but let's not dwell on that. After dinner, we all settled down to watch a movie and catch up with each other. The movie was more like background noise though because we were more interested in hearing about David, our cousin from Brazil. Apparently, he had gone on a blind date before coming here, and the woman turned out to be a pickpocket. We all had a good laugh about this misfortune. Katie and Josh were sitting with mom, dad, and the rest of the family, but after a while, Katie decided to join our conversation. There were just four of us chatting away, and she pretty much ignored everyone else except for David. She was giggling and chatting with him like they were old friends and I could see Josh noticing from across the room, but he didn't come over. At one point, she asked David if he had someone special in his life, and he mentioned that his dog had passed away just a month ago. The nerve of that woman. She just laughed and said, Oh good, it's just a dog. Can you believe it? I can't begin to explain how much David loved his dog, Angel. She was a bull terrier and had a loving and fulfilling life of 13 years, but that doesn't mean his grief wasn't real. And yet, she laughed. After that, David didn't pay any attention to her at all, which was totally understandable. Once she realized she wasn't getting anywhere with David, she decided to make a scene. She went to the middle of the room, clapped her hands like a monkey to get everyone's attention, and then announced that she had received her first endorsement deal from a small business to review and promote their products. She started explaining the details, and Josh actually looked very proud of her. For a moment, I even felt happy for her. It seemed like she had worked hard for this opportunity, and it was finally paying off. But of course, things couldn't stay positive with her around. After talking about her endorsement deal, she went down the victim road, complaining about how tough it's been with Josh running his business and how she's overwhelmed with responsibilities. Then she looked at my uncles and aunts and went on to say that she felt very underappreciated because she expected mom to come over and help her pursue her passions and take care of the house, but mom never did. To try and smooth things over, she added that she wasn't blaming mom, but she felt it was important to be open with the family and wanted to share. But then came the final blow. She announced that in a few months, she would be making more money than Josh ever did, and maybe he could be a stay-at-home husband and enjoy being a trophy husband for a change. That was it. Josh turned red, and mom looked like she was on the verge of tears. 
That was the last straw for me. I couldn't hold back any longer. I gave her a piece of my mind and told her off. I reminded her that for so many years, my brother had been funding her influencer activities. Everything she bought, all her demands, her lifestyle, everything came from Josh. So firstly, my brother was no trophy husband. And secondly, she was being selfish and ungrateful. Without Josh, she would be nobody. I suggested that if she needed help around the house so badly, she could hire a maid with her non-existent income. I told her that getting manicures funded by Josh wasn't a priority and she was free to get her hands dirty. And as for her flirting with David, I didn't hold back there either. I told her that even though she was shamelessly flirting with her husband's brother right in front of him, David wouldn't give her the time of the day. He can spot low class and annoying behavior from a mile away and he wouldn't waste a second of his attention on her even if she were the last woman on earth. So after I gave her a piece of my mind, Katie slapped me. Josh stood up and told her to stay within her limits, which was unexpected but definitely a good move on his part. However, Katie surprised me by pushing Josh aside and shouting at him, calling him a good-for-nothing nobody and telling him to go to hell. She said that she was done with him and was going to file for divorce. After that, she stormed out of the house like she was on a mission. Since they had come in Josh's car, I had no idea how she planned to get wherever she was going. About an hour later though, she came back crying her eyes out. Her makeup was all smeared, she had a bleeding knee and she was barefoot, with her feet bleeding too. I was taken aback and confused by the sight. Despite my dislike for Katie, there's that girl to girl intuition and I could sense that something was seriously wrong. As soon as I opened the door and I saw her like that, I immediately brought her inside. I asked Josh to get her some water, but he seemed frozen like he was in shock for a moment. Mum rushed to the kitchen and got Katie some water. Once she had calmed down a bit, we asked her what had happened. Katie told us that she had been trying to get a cab, but because of the bad weather and the lack of cabs near the house, she decided to walk down the street. She stood there for another 15 minutes before heading to the McDonald's nearby because she couldn't find a cab. She sat there, had some food and coffee, and when she left, a car pulled up in front of her. It wasn't a taxi though, it was an old Nissan. The guys inside offered her a ride, but when she declined, one of them got out of the car and that's when she panicked and ran. She twisted her ankle a bit because of her heels, so she took them off and ran away. The street where this happened is usually busy, but once you turn the corner and enter the fifth lane to the neighboring street, it's not as busy, especially at night. This lane has some summer holiday cabins that are mostly deserted this time of the year but it's also the shortest way back home. So she decided to take that route, but the car was just around the corner, so she couldn't outrun it. She ended up jumping into nearby bushes, and that's where she got injured. The guys looked for her for a while, but eventually they gave up and left. Katie rushed back home as soon as she could. Even after hearing all of this, Josh just stood there. Maybe he was relieved that nothing too bad had happened, but he still seemed angry. So Josh told me to stay with Katie for the night and he said that he'd drop her off at her mom's in the morning. She seemed surprised and maybe even a bit hurt, but instead of thanking us, she snapped at me and said she didn't need a babysitter, especially not me. I understood that she had been through something traumatic so I didn't react much, but Katie, she's never going to change. The next morning, which was two days ago, Josh and her left without speaking to anyone. However, she did come to meet me and tell me that I was the reason their relationship was ruined and that I was going to rot in hell. She really is like the devil reincarnated, I swear. I tried calling Josh, but he's been ignoring my calls and he's been doing the same with mom and dad. I guess he needs some space right now. I'll try again in a few days, but I can't help but wonder, am I the a-hole for confronting my sister-in-law about everything that has been going on or did I handle it too childishly? considering she acts like a spoiled brat. Hi, it's been 15 days since all of that happened and I'm back with an update. Unfortunately, things have gotten even more complicated than before. Josh wasn't taking my calls and there was obviously a reason for that. So on the day after Christmas, Josh and Katie went back to their place first. They had some sort of fight that Josh wouldn't tell me about and then Katie packed up some of her stuff, just the essentials and they left. Josh dropped her off at her parents' place and then he stayed for lunch. Now, Josh has a good relationship with Gary, Katie's father. After lunch, Gary took Josh aside and they sat outside on the patio to have a cigarette together. 
Gary wanted to know what was going on and why Katie was there. He assumed that things weren't going well, but he needed to know how bad everything was. That's when Josh spilled everything to Gary. Gary, already sensing that things weren't going to smooth over, shared that whenever Katie would visit, there was a friend from their neighborhood named Henry. This guy would show up every day, at all hours, even during the night. And that's all Gary said. Josh, rightfully furious, confronted Katie directly and asked her if she was cheating on him. Katie, with a guilty look and an inability to meet his gaze, remained silent for a few minutes. Eventually, she looked at him and claimed that he couldn't give her the love she deserved. When Josh shared all this with me over the phone, I could feel him trying to hold back tears. He had done everything for Katie, and this was the betrayal he received in return. He wasn't in a good place mentally. Josh asked me not to tell our parents for now, and he'll let them know when he's ready. I believe Josh needs someone to be there for him right now, so I'll be going over to his place tomorrow. Let's see how that goes. Hey, it's been two months since I last updated you all. So here's what's been going on. I'm still here with Josh and he's doing a lot better now. As for his dating life, there's not much happening there. Our parents came to stay with us for a week and initially, the plan was for me to go back with them. However, they suggested I stay with Josh a while longer and I liked that idea. Josh had already told them everything about the situation about a month into it, so they knew what was going on. He's filed for divorce now. Surprisingly, even Katie is happy to go through with it because she signed the papers. What's more, it hadn't even been a month since everything happened and she's already moved in with the guy she cheated with. What a woman, truly. It was kind of surprising for me that everything ended over that small Christmas quarrel because Josh only found out about the cheating later on. But by that point, the divorce process was already in motion. I talked to Josh about it and he told me that things hadn't been working out for quite a while by then. Josh tried to be as supportive as possible towards her, but she gave him no time, attention, or even the slightest bit of effort. Her spending was out of control, and whenever he tried to ask her about it, genuinely concerned, she would start a fight. It got to a point where he felt it was better to say nothing at all than deal with the stress every day. What really pushed him over the edge was her disrespect for his family. He mentioned that Katie had lost interest in him as a person and he had lost respect for her as a partner and significant other. It was heartbreaking to hear because, despite everything, some part of me believed they would work things out. I'm relieved they didn't. There was a period where we felt like we lost Joshua, but now he's back to being part of the family. Great news! Josh and Katie are officially divorced, and we're celebrating with a party tomorrow. I graduated from college last month, and I'm working on my NYU applications. Katie, with her endorsement and living with her boyfriend, received no alimony, which is a relief. Josh took a break in Brazil, met someone, and they're talking online, with no commitments for now. Positive vibes for the future. Our parents are in a bit of a we told you so mood with Josh, and it's somewhat justified given the challenges we face when he let Katie treat us poorly. But I haven't brought it up. He's been through a lot. It's crucial to eventually address any strains in the relationship, but at this moment, it might not be the most appropriate time for such discussions. Josh kindly offered me the opportunity to join him in running the business, which could potentially provide invaluable experience and exposure. However, my primary passion lies in literature, and I am determined to pursue it as my major. Nonetheless, having a backup plan in case things don't go as expected, Josh has generously offered to teach me the ropes and allow me to work alongside him in the business. While it's a promising prospect, I am committed to following my passion for literature. Despite the challenges we faced, things are gradually falling back into place, and I am grateful for your support and understanding. Thank you so much. And that was it for today's story. Thank you very much for listening. Smash that like button for me, and subscribe for more stories. Thanks again. We'll be seeing you in the next one.